Hey there, Cassandra here, and these are the current projects I'm working on in my arcade collection. Yeah! So, uh, we recently moved from Houston to Seattle, and of course the, the games came with us, and, um, in the last couple of months, since we've moved into our new home, which is much larger than the one in Houston, we had pretty strong plans to increase the population of arcade games in the collection. I am actually going back to college, but my classes still don't start for a couple of weeks, so I've been running around kind of, I guess, picking inexpensive Craigslist projects just to kind of have something to do, and two of them have been arcade games, so I'm going to kind of show off the two new projects that we have going on right now. This one is actually, we just picked this up yesterday from a nice man in Olympia, Washington, who had bought this years ago to kind of have a game room, but the game room never happened, so he, I guess he got sick of having it in his garage. And the reason this is interesting is, you know, on the surface, it's just a final fight, which is a a JAMA game made by Capcom in the very early 90s. It's a game that some people consider a classic. I don't really care for it. I think it's pretty derivative. But this is a Donkey Kong Jr. cabinet and you can tell just by the shape. I think most people will know that this is a Nintendo cabinet. But you have this orange laminate and this is not paint on Donkey Kong or Donkey Kong Jr. cabinets or the original Versus cabinets or cabinets like Radar Scope, that kind of first generation of classic Nintendo cabinets. This is a laminate. It's colored this way. And believe it or not, this cabinet is in fantastic condition despite the fact it's been converted now twice um, from its original Donkey Kong to a, a Nintendo Versus system. So it could have been anything. It could have been... Hogan's Alley or Super Mario Brothers or Castlevania, any of those games in that system. And then at some point in its life, probably in 1990 or so, it got converted to a final fight. And the great thing for someone like me who's looking for a restoration project, the reason why these kind of cabinets get me very excited is that they didn't paint over this orange laminate. They simply put a giant black vinyl sticker they came off very easily, so finding that kind of stuff is just, it's its a miracle for game collectors, especially people like me who like to restore them, and uh, so it's, those kind of things are pretty hard to duplicate, even if you paint it, it's not quite the same as that original laminate, and if we look, I'm going to scoot this sucker around, Nintendo cabinets, by the way, are a lot lighter than a lot of other arcade cabinets, so they're a little easier to work on. I'm going to bend this down a little bit so you can see here what I'm looking at. This is the original Nintendo Sanyo 20 inch, not a 19, it's actually a 20 inch, which is kind of unusual. Nintendo did that. Arcade monitor. So that's a great thing to see. And even though it's been mounted horizontally now compared to vertically like it would have been for the Donkey Kong Jr., the audio board, which is part of the monitor on Nintendo games, is still intact, which is fantastic. So this will be, again, another kind of nice restoration. We still have the original flap here. Um, I have the original back door, which is not in great shape, but it actually has the original monitor instructions still in the back. Here's where my shoddy camera work. We can get a little closer in here to this monitor. And, uh, it's not in the greatest shape. We're gonna have to have this recapped. Although these caps don't look original to me. And probably put a new flyback. It's, I couldn't quite get it to balance to a good color. And if we go in here, that's the replacement switching power supply, it looks like, that they put in, and there's your Final Fight Jam aboard. But we still have the original little kind of wood apparatus, and now here would have been the original Nintendo power supply, which is missing, but we do have the original plug 
in the original isolation transformer with that Nintendo part number still on it, so that's pretty, pretty neat. And uh, overall, this cabinet's in pretty good shape. We'll just I'll kind of show you here. We've got the, this would have been the placard that was put in here when they converted it to a versus package. Uh, but it would have had a different one originally when it was a junior from the factory. This is a uh, plywood version of this cabinet, which is my understanding means it was actually made in Japan. The particle board versions were made here in Washington State in the USA. Uh, so you'll see Donkey Kongs and Juniors and Donkey Kong 3s with both these variations. Some people like one or the other. I don't really have a preference. The other thing too to see, if you go all the way down to the bottom here and see this, it's got this little pedestal on these Nintendo games and you see the wheels too. Sometimes these pedestals are missing, they're easily damaged. And they were actually put on there originally because for America, we're a little taller than the Japanese are. And um, you see this, the front part actually has been painted black. There's a little bit of damage on the side. This is pretty common, these front panels of Nintendo games. Um, they tend to break pretty easily. Um, just a lot of abuse. Somebody at some point tried to get into this coin door. So we'll get some, some new parts for that. But you can see that orange paint peeking through. This black should come off pretty easily with just maybe even some magic erasers, believe it or not, because this paint is pretty shabby. Uh, the control panel was actually Let me this up real quick. Maybe <laughs> there we go. Stuff on the back here. This is originally a Nintendo versus control panel that they re-drilled for the Final Fight controllers, which is a shame. But you know, once a game stops making money for Operators, they change to something out. There's a little peekaboo, the orange inside. So this is great. This game will restore very well. Uh, there's virtually really nothing wrong with it, other than it's just going to require some work, which you know I'm not really afraid of, right? <laughs> I bought some uh, Donkey Kong Jr. parts at an auction, a whole box of them. So I have the marquee that I actually have over here two board sets. I have no idea if they work or not, so I'm excited to rewire the game and see if those work, and we'll see what happens with this project, but it should be a, a pretty good project. I'm thinking it's going to look pretty sharp. This is one of the better shape condition cabinets like this I've seen in a long time. It just needs a little TLC here and there. But not too much. gonna go full selfie mode for for this next one this is the Simpsons now this game has been in our collection for a little while we bought it early in the year in an auction and it needs a few things and after the move the power supply died so it's um not working but the board is still good I tested it on another jam harness and it was fine so let's uh, just kind of show you what we're gonna do with this game so if you'll bear with me with the shoddy camera work here. The front of this game has quite a bit of damage and I've noticed a lot of these Konami cabinets like uh, the Simpsons and the Turtles tend to have this damage here on, on this front panel and I have a feeling it's because it's not a very, it's pretty thin wood and this control panel up here which actually detaches is rather heavy and rather sturdy and because of the button smasher and people are pretty aggressive with these kind of games that I think over time maybe between that and people maybe kicking the bottom that these things just deteriorate so we're going to replace this entire front panel um, these coin doors I'm going to try to save but I may need to get new bottom shoots because they're pretty bent up just a little damage on the corner here too we'll have to address and the side art it's original, but it's obviously it's in pretty bad shape. This control panel overlay is not original, and it's the wrong shade of teal. Teal is a hard color for inkjet printers, 
to reproduce correctly. So eventually we'll have all new artwork. We'll clean this one up. This should be a pretty easy project. And I'm planning on putting a switcher in here that will also accommodate the two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle boards and a game called Sunset Riders that runs on the same platform. So you'll be able to switch between those four games and they'll be the real hardware, the real boards. So uh, yeah, we'll see with that. This should be a, a good project. Um, probably should also recap. This is a Wells Gardner 7000 monitor, which is a great monitor. It just needs a little love, a little cap, maybe a new uh, flyback or so. The last one we're going to talk about is one I bought last month for a whopping $250 off of Craigslist and it's this Astro's Deluxe Cocktail and I don't really like cocktail games to be honest with you. Um, they're kind of fugly. They're not as interesting as the uprights but I can resist $250 for a vector game and I originally bought it with the intent that I was just going to rebuild a monitor and try to learn a little bit more about the vector monitors and I ended up fixing it rather quickly. <laughs> so let's take a look at it real quick. When we first got it, it had the wrong artwork on it. It actually had asteroids, just regular asteroids artwork on it. And this, it had a plexiglass top that was all just scratched. So I got a custom cut piece of glass tempered glass to match the original specs. The underlay is still the original Asteroids underlay. I have actually printed these stickers off in of Photoshop and put them underneath, but they're not perfect. So I, I'll need to get somebody eventually to print me proper ones. Um, notice it, it should have an Atari logo here and here, and it does not. Um, the control panels were just a disaster, a total mess. I cleaned them and stripped them and put new overlays on. Unfortunately, the overlay kind of moved a little bit. This shield should be up a tiny bit more. Um, so I misaligned it slightly. It, I'm not gonna lie, it bothers me a little bit, but I'll live with it, you know. But otherwise, this, this game just cleaned up beautifully. I couldn't believe it. I repainted the corners um, with kind of a fake powder colored look that I like to do. Um, if we look inside, you know, there's a, just obviously the original monitor, just tons of burning. You can't see it thanks to the smoke glass up here. Little damage here where the little prop arm used to be. So I'll have to address that. Um, but it is a Asteroids Deluxe. The cabinet's a little different than the Asteroids Cocktail in its arrangement where the board slides out from the side instead of the front drawer. Um, I put a bunch of new caps on this monitor. Monitor was a little flaky and there was a dead power switch in it. But after I addressed those two things, it it just works fantastically. And it's actually a, I don't really have a lot of love for Asteroids before I got this. But I have to say, I really, really enjoy playing this game. It's a lot of fun. Asteroids Deluxe has the reputation for being kind of punishing to play. It's a lot more difficult than the original Asteroids. And this is the original board set. There's a second version of the board set that was toned down difficulty-wise, but this is a great game. It's a lot of fun, and um, I have a couple things I need to still do to it. It needs new team molding desperately. As you can see, it's just falling apart. Uh, these legs, um, I'm going to paint them and sand them down. They're looking pretty, pretty dire. I'll probably touch up the cabinet in little spots, too. Uh, the coin door is fairly bent. Looks like somebody tried to claw at it at some point. So I'll straighten that out and repaint that. There's some damage on the side, on the little veneer parts. Um, probably try to replace that. I have the new corners for the legs once I repaint them. And it's just a matter of finding the right kind of underlay. Hopefully uh, someone can make one for me. Um, finding the original one. The original ones were actually, I think, painted underneath on the back of the glass or not silk screen but almost mylar screen so but it looks pretty good i mean 250 fifty dollar game and i probably have put only about 75 dollars in parts in it and it's um kind of a cool new thing of the collection there you go
And those are the upcoming projects that we have as far as the arcade game collection goes. You can check out the website down here, maybe right here, um, that I have, which you may be on right now. I have no idea. I'm not a mind reader. I just don't know. So um, I'm going to try something different with the upcoming restoration videos of the Donkey Kong. I'm going to try to do them in, in real time um, because some people had a lot of questions about how I did the outrun. So that um, might be helpful for people who tend to restore these things or are looking for information. There's a lot of good information out there on the web and a lot of bad advice and information. So, you know, buyer beware, be careful what you read and um, take it a step at a time and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty or make a few mistakes. It's gonna happen. Um, just be careful when working around electronics. You know, they are kind of dangerous. You know, you don't wanna get, get killed by electricity. <laughs> So, anywho, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.